Shabbat Shalom. It's so fitting that tonight we're celebrating our teachers for Teacher Shabbat because only our teachers would be like, what is it, the U United States Postal Service? Come sleep, come rain, come snow. We make it here. It is the most dedicated group in our congregation and we are so excited to celebrate all of our teachers and those who are celebrating special anniversaries tonight and also a special retirement. And so as we light our Shabbat candles and turn to page 14, I would like to call up the supervisors of our religious school and our ECC programs, Alicia Mendelson, Rachel Levine, and Sharon Anders. You'll be seeing Julie Levy in a little bit. And we're thinking of Dr. Marilyn Gonshelberg, who is not feeling well and couldn't be here tonight. flickering flames of the Shabbat candles mark this moment as sacred time, a time of warmth as our community joins together in prayer, a time of brightness as our spirits are lifted by the melodies of our people, a time of light as we look toward the future through the eyes of our children. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav, Sivanu Lahadli Ner Shell Shabbat. Page 22. May the door of the synagogue be wide enough to receive all who hunger for love, all who are lonely for fellowship. May the door of the synagogue be narrow enough to shut out pettiness and pride, envy and anger. May it be too high to admit complacency, selfishness, and harshness. May this world be the May this synagogue be, for all who enter, the doorway to a richer and more meaningful life. Continue with Lakado D on page 34. <laughs>
standing as we turn in our prayer books to page 45 and join together in the middle of the page. Our kind deeds are used by God as seed for the planting of trees in the Garden of Eden. Thus, each of us, by our deeds, has the power to create our own paradise. Baruch Ata Adonai, Hama'ariv Aravim, blessed are you, O God, who makes the evening fall. We continue on page 49. We are loved by an unending love, we are embraced by the covenant of grace. We are guided by the still small voice within us. We are loved by an unending love, a ne'er tamid to be tended from generation to generation, and a gentle love, giving meaning to our existence, structure to our lives, and of all the generations who have embraced their covenant. Continuing together on page 57 with Ve'ahavta. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha Bechol levavecha uvechol nafshecha Uvechol meodecha Ve'ahayu ha'devarim ha'ele Asher anochim etzavecha Yom alevavecha 
بشینان که هم لبال نخواه به دیبال که هم به شیفت خواه به بیت خواه و بلخت خواه و درخت و به شوف خواه و به کم خواه و بشار تمل او تل یده خواه و هایول تو تفوت بین این خواه و خطاب کام آلمز و زود بیت خواه و بی شعر خواه لمان تیز که رو و آسیته بهت کل می توتای بی تم که روشیم لله خم آنی آدونای لله خم آشر هد سهیتی تم مرد می ترایم بیاد لخم دلهیم آنی آدونای لله خم Page 60, we continue with this prayer that leads us into the Micha Mocha, a prayer of freedom, of celebration. It is like tonight, a night when we celebrate our incredible accomplishments. At the top of the page, we celebrate our miracles, the water tum parting, wall tumbling, sun standing still, miracles of our ancestors, and the baby cooing, prayer moving. Who is like you, O God, creator of fulfillment and joy? So we turn to page 62 now and join together in our song of freedom. We continue together in the middle of page 64. Cause us, our Creator, to lie down in peace, and raise us up, O Sovereign God, to renewed life and peace. Spread over us the shelter of your peace. Guide us with your good counsel, and be our shield of mercy and of peace. Baruch atah Adonai, haporei sukat shalom aleinu, ve'al kol amo Yisrael ve'al Yerushalayim. 
Blessed are you, Adonai, whose shelter of peace is spread over us, over all your people, Israel, and over Jerusalem. Together at the bottom of page 69, prayer invites us to let God's presence suffuse our spirits, to let God's will prevail in our lives. Prayer cannot bring water to parched fields, nor mend a broken bridge, nor rebuild a ruined city, but prayer can water an arid soul, mend a broken heart, and rebuild a weakened will. Baruch atah Adonai, Mechayeh hakol. Blessed are you, O God, who renews all things. As you see, we pray silently.
Robin Hornstein was looking at the brochure honoring our teachers and she was kind enough to point out to me that Linda Brodsky, who started teaching 60 years ago here at Temple Israel, started teaching when I was one years old. <laughs> and if you think of that year, 60, 61 years ago, it was really an amazing year. The, uh, Linda Brodsky started teaching, Paul Yedwab was born, and the Detroit Lions won a championship. I mean, that is a really good year. <laughs> and so as we continue with the Misha Beirach prayer, the prayer for healing, we ask that everyone, all of our loved ones, have that kind of koyach, that kind of strength, the kind of strength that Linda has brought to this temple for so many years, and that really inspires us all. And we send that kind of strength to those who are in need of healing and those who are in need of strength as we sing together Misha Beirach on page 83, I believe. A group of people stood at the foot of a mountain, terrified and awestruck as thunder shook the ground and lightning lit up the sky. The peal of a shofar sounded and a booming, unseen voice spoke to them. The people trembled and the mountain quaked as God spoke to the Israelites, giving them laws and rules, ten commandments, in fact, with which to guide their lives and their community. This is the story that we read in the Torah last Shabbat, the family drama of our matriarchs and patriarchs followed by the intensity of the Exodus climaxed with the giving of the Ten Commandments. And then, this Shabbat, we descend from the mountain with a thud. The excitement that the narrative in the Torah of the narrative of the Torah gives way to endless laws and instructions about how we must behave, how we need to treat one another, how we are commanded to worship God. As I was thinking about our service tonight and reading other colleagues' commentary about Mishpatim, this week's Torah portion, I came across a piece by Rabbi Diane Kohler Esses. Like me, she agrees that the transition from the drama of Revelation to the never-ending laws is pretty yawn-inducing. It's far more stimulating to listen to and learn from the narratives, but Rabbi Kohler Esses understands this shift in an interesting way. She explains that up until this point in the text, we're told a story. We're watching these events happen to others, but where story becomes law, we are told how to live our lives. In this shift from narrative to law, we become the actors. We become the narrative. So what does it mean for us to become the narrative? If we are subject of the laws, we are the story. The way that we celebrate the holidays, observe the commandments, pass down rituals, and teach tradition, that becomes the new narrative, our personal stories. And as we become the story, we also become accountable for learning our stories and our laws, for behaving in certain ways. 
we're now responsible for teaching, for learning, and for engaging with our Judaism. And this is a lesson that each of our teachers has learned well. They understand that as the center of our narrative, they have been given the sacred duty of sharing that teaching with every one of our learners, from babies through adults. As one teacher related, the huge lesson that I have learned is that while content matters, what our students remember is how we made them feel in class, how we connected. They remember feelings more than the ma'ariv. There's a well-known teaching from the Talmud. Rabbi Hanina said, I have learned much from my teachers and even more from my friends, but from my students, I have learned more than from all of them. And I agree, while I have learned so much from my teachers over the years, our best teachers, in fact, are often our students. Our students teach us that being the center of our narrative means finding meaning in our own Judaism. This week, I had the privilege of interviewing our high school seniors for the video montage that will be shown at their Temple Israel high school graduation. As I asked them what, e what being Jewish meant to them, without pause, they each responded eloquently, sharing that Jewish values guided them, Jewish traditions centered them, and Jewish teaching informed their lives. They spoke about finding God in nature, at summer camp, in our services, and even at the Super Bowl. And they taught me that sometimes the smallest interactions have the largest impact. Being part of the story means finding our own way to build a relationship with God. And this week, our third grade students reminded me that there's no one way to see God. When asked to describe what God might look like, one third grader wrote, she looks like a fairy. <laughs> Another described God as both male and female in the same sentence. And a third wrote that God is a heart, because that's where he feels God. From our students, I have learned the importance of curiosity. As I had lunch recently with a two-year-old class, they asked question after question, wondering about why I was a rabbi, what I did all day, and most importantly, why I hadn't brought my daughter to visit them. I am not alone in learning from our students. Our teachers have learned that aha moments are real, not just something that we hope for each week, but are occurring every moment that we teach. Another teacher shared that she has learned to always expect the silliest answers, especially from the little ones. They always find a way to make you laugh. Others have learned patience from our students that it's okay to take our time, to go slowly, and make sure we're really living in the moment. Our ancient rabbis tell another story about the giving of the Torah, one that's slightly different than I began with. When the Jewish people left Egypt's slavery, they traveled to Mount Sinai and prepared to receive the revelation of the Torah. And as God began to speak the sacred words, with each word that God spoke, the Israelites were so overcome with awe that they leaped backward the equivalent of seven miles. The ministering angels brought them back to the mountain where the people would hear the next word and jump back again. And again, the angels brought them back, again and again, until the entire Torah was revealed. The whole community of Israel was standing at Sinai, vulnerable, trembling, and so overwhelmed by their experience that they literally could not stand still. And as they jumped backward to less holy ground, the angels didn't scold them or berate them, but quietly guided them back, supporting them, assuring them. The teachers that we're honoring tonight are like these angels offering support when Judaism feels challenging and overwhelming, steering our children back when they jump away, gently helping them re-engage, helping them understand what it means to be the center of our Jewish story, to be the story, and learning so much from them in every le lesson they teach. As we come down from the mountain with a thud on this Shabbat, maybe we will discover that it isn't really a thud at all, but an opportunity to re-envision our narrative, to be guided back again and again, discovering that the Torah has become all about us. We are at the very center. And as we re-examine our role in the story, perhaps the law will take on new, more personal implications. On this Educator Shabbat, as we honor our incredible Temple Israel teachers, may we take the advice of Rabbi Hanina, finding wisdom in our teachers, 
insight from our friends, and most of all, may we open our eyes and our hearts to learn every day from our students. Kenya Hiratzon, may this be God's will. Now my pleasure to invite forward Julie Levy, the director of our Early Childhood Center, so that we can honor our teachers who are celebrating milestone years and their dedication to teaching at Temple. Before we hand out our first two awards, we need to pause because teaching in one place, teaching religious school in one place for 55 and 60 years is incredible. It's unheard of and it deserves so much more of a thank you than we can ever offer. Tonight, we are celebrating Linda Brodsky for two milestones. So Linda, I'm gonna invite you to come forward. Linda has been a teacher here for 60 years. She is part of the very fabric of Temple Israel. She's a past president, an usher, a dedicated learner, and a teacher for so many hundreds of our students. Tonight, we are also celebrating Linda's retirement, although that is a bittersweet celebration. When I first came to Temple seven years ago, I was a little bit nervous about supervising Bob Lask and Linda Brodsky. <laughs> they had been my teachers. How could I possibly be their supervisor, their boss? But the two of you made my job easy. You were my biggest supporters, and I have been your biggest cheerleader. Linda, it's been an honor to work with you, to learn from you, to watch students fall in love with your classes, and so while we might not be seeing you on Sunday mornings and Monday evenings in the fall, a teacher always teaches. And I know that in every place and every way, you will continue to impart your knowledge and your wisdom to everyone you come across. So thank you for your dedication to our religious school program for the last 60 years. Mazel tov, we love you. Thank you. Getting 
a standing ovation. Bob Lask, unfortunately, is not here due to the weather, but I'm hoping he's watching as we honor him. He's been teaching at Temple Israel for 55 years, but he has been in Jewish education for even longer. He was my teacher in high school. He was my mother's teacher. How many teachers, can you say, have taught generation after generation? Bob, thank you for your incredible commitment, for your devotion to teaching, to learning, to our students, and to Temple Israel. We will honor you in person when we see you. It's always such a pleasure to be able to read the names of the teachers and the years in which they have been here. It's overwhelming for somebody who hasn't been here as long as Linda Brodsky, who I too supervised. And when I came as a 22-year-old, was a supervisor of Linda Brodsky um, and Bob Lass. Um, so it is an honor to watch her retire this evening. Um, a fabulous teacher indeed. But her daughter also is getting 35 years today. So we honor today for 35 years Rhonda Brodsky and Sue Kaufman. <laughs> Rhonda Brodsky, Rhonda knows every single child who stops by our school office on a Sunday morning. And more than just knowing her, every one of these students love her and the way she can make them smile and laugh. Sue, for 35 years, Sue has been a dedicated teacher who keeps her team on track and loves to be with our youngest children. For 30 years, Eileen Rodner. <laughs> Eileen has a gift for, an, for engaging students in such a way that learning becomes exciting and contagious. For 25 years, Barbara Eskin. For years, Barbara has been inspiring and sharing her love for Judaism with her second grade students. For 20 years, we have Sherry Enfield and Git Feldman. Every child has a mutual love and respect for Sherry. The students in her class feel her genuine interest and love for them. Git is an incredible team player and the partner that everyone wants. For 15 years, Robin Canvasser and Marilyn Shelberg. Robin is patient and easygoing, which is the necessary perfecta when it comes to working with two-year-olds. Marilyn works so hard with our teachers and tutors and is devoted to every child in fourth through seventh grade get the most out of their Jewish learning. For 10 years, we honor Marcy Berlin, Sherry Collin, Robin Freund, and Lauren Johnson. <clears throat> Marcy's creativity has continued to enhance our seventh grade curriculum year. Cheryl's loving nature has made our pre-K and kindergartners feel so welcome as they begin religious school on Sunday mornings. Robin cares so deeply about teaching our third grade students and puts so much thought into each and every lesson. From ECC to religious school to seventh grade to adults, Lauren's dedication to the education of our Temple Israel learners is amazing. For five years, we honor Sue Berlin, Sam Jar, Rochelle Kalski, Rachel Levine, Ali Manson, Alicia Mendelson, and Rena Rosner. <laughs> Sue's commitment to the ECC is illustrated by her willingness to share ideas and collaborate with others. Sam brings her joy and passion for music to our students each week. Rochelle's enthusiasm has brightened our fifth grade Judaic curriculum. Rachel stepped up this year uh, and became the integral final piece in completing the ECC administration team. Allie has a wonderful connection with the children, both in her classroom and while teaching Zumba. Alicia is incredibly hardworking, dedicated to supervising our madrachim and developing creative family programs for every age group. And Rina is dedicated, patient, and caring with every student she tutors, helping them learn Hebrew. This is this year's honorees. We have a couple more awards. Each year we award religious school teachers with the Ethel and Rod. Oh, teachers, you can stay up here because you're going to get to stay up for the Alenu in just a minute. We want to look at your faces and celebrate you a little longer. 
We award our religious school teachers with the Ethel and Robert Danto Outstanding Teacher Award. And it's our, always hard to pick one or two because everyone is excellent. But this year, a couple of teachers stood out. They're committed to learners of all ages, dedicated to helping their students learn and excel. And clearly, they're committed to Temple Israel because they also, also both were recognized for celebrating 10 years. Marcy Berlin and Robin Freund, I'm honored to give you this award tonight. And one last award, we are so privileged to have the Maurice Edwin Barr Outstanding Hebrew Student Award. Many of our students were nominated based on a criteria of consistent attendance being caring classmates and dedicated learners. But this year we have three students who are receiving this special award, Alexis Berman, Brody Olashansky, and Chandler Bornstein. Mazel tov to each of you, we're so proud of your hard work. In a moment, we're going to go to the conclusion of our service, but I, I, I have to believe Bob Lask is watching. So I'm going to say something clearly. No one has ever supervised Linda Brodsky or Bob Lask. You may have thought you were supervising these two. I came a long time ago. I was a young rabbi. No impact at all on anything. Now. It's a snowy night tonight. How many of you were there? What was the year, Linda? I don't know. Eric. I don't know. Eric, 1961. 19 what? 78. 1978. Stand up, Eric. His bar mitzvah, which was on a Friday night, was canceled because of what? A snow emergency leading to Saturday the first Havdalah bar mitzvah that we ever had at Temple Israel because we weren't doing them then. So, Linda, what is this to say? <laughs> From those moments to all of these, we are thrilled to honor you tonight to so many memories, so many stories, so many great things. But again, I have to conclude as we move to the Aleinu and we invite up all of our teachers and madrichim who are here, no one ever supervised Bob Lask or Linda Brodsky. We turn now to page 189, invite the Madrichim to come up on the Bima and any other kids who are here as we rise for the Aleinu. Please be seated. We turn now to the task of memory as we recall those who've died in the period of Shloshim in the last 30 days. We remember Mark Applebaum, Barbara Benjamin, Laurel Deitch, Anita Emmer, Joel Gerson, Sydney Gilbert, Marlene Goodman, Ruth, Ruth Ray Gottlob, Andrew Saul Green, Isidore Harris, Helga Kauf Berman, Rana Harwood Kay, Ruth Levin, Helen Levine, Henry Marcus, Eleanor Marks, Sherry Middledorf, Sonia Nothman, Faylene Owen, Rita Kozak Parkinson, 
Muriel Rothenberg, Michael Schramm, Carol Schur, Lawrence Sillitz, Erwin Saporin, Thomas Slovis, Henry Spector, John Steele, Betty Steinloff, Susan Trenkamp, Oscar Tuttleman, and Norman Waldron. And we remember those whose yard sites fall at this time. Edith Baines, Dorothy Celeste, Saul Colton, Morton Dermer, Herbert Eidelman, Dr. Irving Gordon, Bunny Gordon, Jacob Harris, Clifton Kelman, Gertrude Mazza, Richard Mendelssohn, Chuck Perlman, Eleanor Reisman, Deanna Weissman Rose, Joe Schneider, Murray Sedley, Harry Schulman, Theodore Tobias, Paula Weberman, Ben Wish, Sue Lawrence, Ruth Blumberg, Monica Wolf, Dr. Jack Lawson, Nareet Jacoby, Ben Stalker, Anna Stalker, Betty Stern, and Gertrude Subrin. Tehei Nishmotehem Sorot Bisrachaim. May their souls be bound up in the bond of everlasting life and memory as we turn now to the Kaddish, which can be found on page 199. <laughs> Yehe Shme Raba Mavorach Leolam Omeo Maya Yid Barach Vishtabach Vi Paar Vit Romam Vit Nase Vita Dar Vita Levita Lal Shme de Kucha Bariku Le La Min Kobir Chata Vishirata Tush Bechata Venechemata Da Amiran Vyama Vim Ru Amen Yehe Shlama Raba Min Shemaya Bechayim alenu ve'al ko Yisrael v'imru amen. O se shalom v'imromav, hu ya'a se shalom. Alenu ve'al ko Yisrael v'imru amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved among us. Amen. We conclude our service on page one with Am Yisrael. Bye. <laughs>